what is a typical day like for me? Uh, I guess a typical day for me is um, I wake up in the morning and you know I get my workout on. I gotta start early. You know I've been working on getting up earlier around like 8 p.m., 8 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Um, workout. I get a couple miles in. I run. I lift. Um, and then I get to work. I actually teach boxing in the mornings. Uh, it's something I used to do as a kid all the way until an adult and now I get a chance to teach people and give back to my community. Adults, kids, people with disabilities. I finish that and right around midday, you know, I get something to eat, um, I read my scriptures. And then um, if I don't go to work, then I have to go to a table read. Or if I don't have a table read, then I have to read a script. And if I don't have to read a script, I have to film. So um, those are my days. And then in the evenings, I like to hang out with friends. Uh, or family. If I'm not doing that, then I like watch a film or something. You know, you feel me? Tuesdays, every Tuesday, I go to movie theater. Every Tuesday, religiously, I go. Even by myself, I don't care. Like, I love the crap. I'll be in there like this with a notebook bag and everything. I love it. But, um, yeah, I just I get up, I work out, go to work. Um, always read my scripts. Always get into my character, what I have to do. Um, go to networking events. If not, then I just go home and I watch movies in there tonight. I love to be. Let's see. I'm very creative and out of the box, I guess, you know. I'm very big on just doing stuff just to do it. You know, my friends make fun of me bad all the time. Like, um, Example, I guess you could say, is uh, what I do for fun. I watch movies. Um, I like to go out and just make memories, you know. I like to do fun things. Like, I don't like to just go and just hang out around. I like to go and be around the city. I love being in Piedmont Park in Atlanta, um, doing outdoor stuff, you know, playing football, um, going to get drinks at different little bars. I like doing that, going like little like intimate bars and getting to know people. Um, I love riding the bird scooters in Atlanta. <laughs> I was mean, getting on the bird scooters. Like me and my whole crew, we just like go like as a team in Atlanta and do that. Um, what's the things I like to do? I like to go and um, just build relationships with people. Like I love going to networking events. I love sitting down and going to different classes with different people and learning about stuff. I really love uh, sipping paint stuff. You know, I can't paint worth a damn at all. <laughs> but uh, um, I like to learn and watch and experience new things as much as I can. You know. <laughs> What does acting mean to me? Acting is it's a lifestyle, you know? It's a craft, it's honesty. I think when I'm acting is the only time I'm actually being myself, to be honest. You know, like, like I said before, like I, I teach boxing and then um, for extra money, I used to bartend. And I do get to be myself, you know, in those environments, but a lot of times it's, hey, how you doing? How you doing this? How you doing that? That's not, you know, you. I might be a form of you, but when you're acting, you're giving yourself to a character, you know, and you can't bring that character to justice without knowing who you are as a person. So I think acting is actually the opposite of what people think it is, you know, acting, pretending. It's actually giving yourself wholeheartedly and full emotion-wise to your craft. Um, I leave, I live, drink, eat, sleep, breathe it, you know? Um, I can save my life. And it's just a craft that I give my everything to. Me? Ignoring you? <laughs> That's funny. You were the one who was supposed to help me with my long jump today. So I was supposed to act like you weren't swerving me earlier? How did I get into acting? Um, <laughs> I get this question asked a lot, but um, it's funny. So I acted as a kid. I did like a couple of McDonald's commercials, like little ones. Um, 
And like a lot of like little plays, like really little tiny plays. Like I think I was a tree in one of mine uh, that could speak for like two lines. Um, but I really got professional into it a few years ago. I'm 24 now and I was 21. And I was with the Bout Faces Models and Talent as my first agency. Shout out to them. Um, I was modeling for, you know, Macy's and Belk and Ron and Brothers hair shows and uh, doing runway shows and doing a bunch of different photo shoots. And my agent, she's like a grandmother to me, um, she came up to me and she's like, Zach, you know, you're really good at you know, switching characters. Like, what you mean? She's like, you can be goofy and have fun. And then when it's time for you to be serious and get ready for whatever you gotta be on that, on that set or on that runway, you switch and it's not awkward. It's not, you know, fake, it's real. I think you should be an actor. Uh, plus, we support actors here. I was like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Like, I ain't gonna remember lines. I'm like, I used to think actors were liars. <laughs> like, I'm never gonna like, like, I'm not gonna do that. Like, that's fake. Um, I think I was just scared, you know, to commit to something like that that goes so far deep into your emotions. That's really what it was. Now that I think about it, oh, wow, that's really what it was. I was actually scared to be emotionally involved so deep and feel like I won't be able to come back from it. But anyway, um. She's like, you should do what you should do. I was like, no, no, no. But then um, she's like, hey, I, I got this commercial for you and you're not gonna be speaking that much. I said, okay, cool. So it was in Myrtle Beach. You know, they paid for my condo, paid for my gas there, paid for my food there, paid for me to be on set every day. Um, so that was cool. I brought my girlfriend at the time along with me. Uh, she played my girlfriend in the commercial. I get to the table read. I see I'm on the top of the list. The director's laughing. I was like, what is that about? He's like, you should call your agent and find out. Kind of find out I was leaving the commercial. I had like 15 lines. So uh, I called her, she thought it was funny, and she knew I'm headstrong. She's like, where are you gonna leave? I said, well, no, I'm here now. And boom, that's what happened. I was in a commercial, and uh, ever since then, I just fell in love with it. So yeah, I was wrong, I loved it. You should be thanking me. You got to sit next to who you really wanted to. Someone who's gotten to Harvard, back to real dumb. What is the biggest hindrance of my career so far? Uh, to be honest, man, um, it's not being able to have the opportunity of being put in a situation to where I could have learned earlier. And what I mean by that is, to be real, my culture, we're not set up to succeed. And I know you probably hear this a lot, but it's real. And I want to try to make that real as possible to you. But growing up as a black boy in America, you're not really given many avenues to go to. Um, there's no way in hell my parents could have afforded, my single mother um, could have afforded, you know, to put me in any type of acting school. And as a kid, I remember on top of my parents telling me and my family telling me and my friends telling me, I was a very imaginative kid, you know, I was never afraid to be on stage. I, as much as I could do at school, I was going to dancing and I was singing and I was acting and going and being in plays. I have photos, but that was just school stuff. And I wish I had the opportunity as a child or even as a young adult to be able to go to different schools, to be able to go to drama school, to be able to go to a university with acting. But I couldn't afford it. And my family wasn't financially literate to know how to do it or gain that power themselves either. So I had to wait at a very older age, in my opinion, which probably isn't very old, but until 21, you know, I was you know, considered a grown man. I had a good job and I had to save and save and save and save, put money aside to work and to go to different studios and learn. And studios, you know, they're very good learning. You know, I've, I'm lucky and blessed enough to find good uh, instructors, but it's not like Juilliard's, you know. Um, it's not like a university in New York somewhere or LA that I could go to every single day and study and study and study. I would have loved to do that, but I think my biggest hindrance was not being set up, you know, not having financial literate, you know, culture. It's not my parents' fault. Um, it's a situation us as African Americans were put into, and we're trying to fix that every single day. I want to sit with you, Cairo. I even packed those Jamaican chips you're so obsessed with. What has been the biggest highlight of my career? Okay. Um, I can name, I'll break it up into two parts. I guess the first part real quick will be uh, the biggest thing that I've done so far was work on um, on ID on Homicide Hunter and also with uh, uh, 
Tails on BET. Um, I got to meet uh, Drea, and I got to meet, um, uh, I got to meet Michael B. Jordan. Um, that was really cool, that was crazy. Um, Homicide Hunter was really big because that's like, like top three, I believe, biggest CSI shows out right now. And um, I literally, I saw the ratings and everything, and I was in that eighth season. And um, there was like, I want to say, at least six million viewers, if not more. And it was just crazy. You know, I got, to, I had a whole party, and I had family and friends. I had people DMing me like, yo, you're on this, you're on that. That was crazy to see. Um, but my personal, like, favorite, that, those are like the biggest highlights that I guess a normal person would think. Like, oh, he was on this channel, he was on this channel. I think my personal favorite is I did um, this thing called Catch. And it's actually coming out soon. Um, it's a film. I play a superhero. And I remember this time last year, I said, man, I would love to play a superhero one day. And um, it happened. And I got to really see myself fighting. I had to learn, I had to learn a, um, a fighting choreography from people from Marvel actually came and taught us um, that worked with Marvel. Um, that was fun. I got to see myself with superpowers. And um, hopefully it turns into something even bigger and longer so I can see myself more doing that. But that was the craziest thing ever. And like their writing was amazing. And I, it really reaches out to my culture and several other cultures, you know, not just the black culture, but to the gay community, um, albino community. Um, everything is really cool. So I got to be a young black superhero. That was the craziest thing ever. Wait, the banana chips? That starts like an hour away. Yeah, it is. What advice do I have for young actors coming up in the game? Be thick skinned. You know, um, you're gonna hear a billion no's, it's gonna sound like, what it's gonna feel like. I started taking this dream professionally like maybe three years ago. The first year to year and a half, which I still continue now, but the first year to year and a half, I did nothing but go to class. I'm gonna tell you this right now. A lot of casting directors, that not just in Atlanta, but everywhere in America, do not respect Atlanta actors, homegrown Atlanta actors. You wanna know why? Because a lot of them say they're actors and they're just extras, you know, and they've never been to a class, they won't go to a class, won't spend the money, won't earn the money to where you have to spend it on good headshots. You know, they just get their homeboy to take pictures, it's not a quality headshot. They don't have an IMDb, um, which is like an online professional resume. Um, they don't invest back in themselves like they need to. And that's not good. It's not good at all. Take that time to audition and to, to learn first before you do auditions. You know, that's what the professionals do up in New York and LA. They go to the universities, they go to different studios, sometimes a year, maybe two, maybe three, where they're not allowed to audition until after they finish the course. So I made, since I couldn't go to those universities, I went to different studios and I promised myself that I would spend at least a year on my own. I wouldn't audition for nothing. I wouldn't say yes to anything, unless it was something, something super big, but that didn't happen, of course, but um, spend your time learning the craft, day in and day out. Don't give up. And that's, that, this goes not just for young actors, this goes for people that are 50 years old and want to be actors. That's what I love about the craft, that you can be 55 years old and just start and be successful before you die. You can. There's no correct starting point. Don't beat yourself up about it if you started later than everybody else, but invest in the craft, invest in yourself. Take the time to learn, take the time to study. It's just like sports. They know how they watch film. But basketball players, football players, watch your film. Look up what are good TV shows, good quality shows, good quality movies. Spend your time in there learning. See what's good acting, see what's good writing. Read about it. A good book to get is uh, The Actor's Guide um, by Adam Chubik. Um, Choices is another good book. Um, Save the Cat is another good book. That's, a, that's all about a plot of a film. Once you read that book, you pretty much know 90% of how plots are made. And um, you want to learn, that way it teaches you, you know, behind the camera, so you can perform better in front of the camera. Um, but just never give up. You know, you're going to get a lot more no's and yeses. I think within the last year, I've auditioned for 100 things, literally, and they've heard about 10 to 12 yeses, um, if that. But it's going to make it a lot more special when you do get it. And just don't give up because things that you bring to the camera and to the stage are things that nobody else can duplicate. And don't forget that.